this is a review of Art Rage for Android by Ambient Design. Um, in my opinion, this is probably the best art program. In fact, it is the best art program that I've used on Windows. Um, just has the best sort of blending tools and things, and it emulates real painting media. Um, which is something that things like Manga Studio and Photoshop just don't do. They have a, a, a more digital painting kind of look, whereas Art Rage has a more traditional medium appearance. Um, this is just the, uh, the setup page where you choose your resolution and things. So I'm going to actually change the resolution to something a bit smaller so that it isn't quite as stressing. Um, you can choose the green here. So say I'll choose canvas. You get a canvas kind of texture. You probably can't see that. I'm using a webcam so it's 2720p. Um, you can adjust the roughness of the canvas, you can make it metallic, um, you can change the color of the canvas, you can go in, there's different presets, basic canvas, fine canvas, smooth canvas, basic, cockled, crumpled paper, fine paper, etc. Um, so there's a good range of things that you can, you can select. Uh, you can also just select a completely smooth um, a completely smooth palette or canvas, which is basically just like drawn on a blank screen. So I'll choose a basic canvas for this, and I'll go ahead and load it up. Um, so you have a variety of different tools here. I'll start off with just you've got your sort of tool settings so if I choose the oil brush down here choose settings in the top left corner you have pressure sensitivity that you can set so that you don't have to lean quite so hard or you know you, you need you want to lean harder uh, but if you're using a screen tablet screen you probably don't want to be leaning too hard in case the nib scratches the uh, scratches the screen you can add thinners which will thin out the paint and the amount of paint that's loaded onto it, insta dry, auto clean. So if you disable auto clean, uh, you need to use a little sort of water pot to clean the brush. Um, and it'll get, you know, the more that you mix colours, the dirtier the brush will become. Um, just so you know, I have the webcams actually attached to my head. You know, I've got a strapped in my head to make it kind of easier um, so it's a bit of a strange setup thankfully you can't see me <laughs> um, so for every every brush you know it has its own settings some of them will be slightly different you've got color bleed for uh, the watercolors or airbrush has tilt angle, taper length, pressure, opacity Opacity, I'm not sure which way to pronounce that word. Um, with pens and things, you have taper length, aspect ratio, or aspect, uh, smoothing, which kind of gives you, I'll just show that quickly. Smoothing gives you a sort of little smooth lines in a kind of subtle way. You can actually put it right up so that. It'll really, really smooth lines, which could be useful for sort of calligraphy or something like that. You got your undos up at the top there. Um, in options, you have the option to settings stylus only mode, or you can set that off so that you can actually you know paint with your fingers and things as well. Uh, maybe you don't have a pen enabled tablet, so you need to actually paint with your finger. Um, basic options there, nothing 
incredibly fancy. It's all pinched to zoom, so you pinch. There's no rotate in this version. They're sort of expecting you to rotate your actual tablet as opposed to rotating the canvas, which for, for larger tablets can maybe be a little bit of a hassle. Um, you have your layer functionality, so you create new layers. Um, and then you can arrange the order of them by dragging, dropping. And you select a layer here, you've got your options, layer options. So you can import photos or you can uh, duplicate layers, delete layer, merge the layer into the layer above or below, or merge all layers, canvas settings, canvas lighting, you change the blend mode. So the blend mode allows you to do all sorts of things that are very useful. Um, I've got references, so you can import images as reference files, or take photos if you have a camera on your um, on your tablet. Then you have like tracing mode, where you can import an image or take a photo and use it as a basis to sort of get your basic outline. You can also use it to take colors from your uh, it'll, it'll automatically lift colors from a tracing image if you set it to the background and set it to invisible. Um, color samples which I'm not sure. It might take the samples out of photos, I don't know. I've never used it actually. Um, so you have all the blending tools that you would expect from ArtRage. If you've used the desktop mode, you'll know exactly what you're doing straight away. So there's, you know, starts off light, goes heavy, back to light again. So it's pressure sensitive. Um, if I go down here and choose a lighter color, you'll see that it blends as I brush into it. The lighter that I lean, the less it blends. So it behaves the way you would expect paint to behave. Um, if you have the palette knife tool here, and you go down here and you can select different palette knife presets. Um, hard out smudge just it allows you to blend colors together so you can get all different kinds of textures and tones mid tones you know it's you can start off with two basic colors or you know a light dark mid tone and lay them down quite roughly and then you can come in with a tool like this and just blend and blend and blend until they have the appearance that you want them to have um, Excellent blending tools, best blending tools out of all the software that I've ever used. I have the um, the desktop version of Manga Studio, and it has okay blending tools, but they're they're nowhere near as convincing for me. They have a, a roughness to them, you know, that just makes you believe that it's real paint, as opposed to just pushing pixels around the screen. Um, there's other presets here that uh, the ones that I find most useful are the hard out smudge and hard wet blender. Hard wet blender gives you a kind of a you know as if you were thinning the paint out with water. Um, this works on all different kinds of mediums as well. It doesn't just work on paint, or you know you would expect it to maybe just work on watercolors, but it, this is oils, so. It has the same effect on oils as it has on watercolors or anything else. So you can create some really nice feathered sort of textures or just subtle tonal changes and things with that. Um, there are other ones here like the Harsh Chaos which is another wet blender but it's uh, a bit more extreme. It has an even more sort of feathered approach to it. Not this kind of 
allows you to do all sorts of interesting visual things that you just can't do with other programs. Um, which is why I tend to do all of my digital painting either in this or in uh, the desktop version. And if you've checked out my YouTube channel before, you'll see you know a lot of digital paintings and things that I've done with uh, the desktop version of Outreach. So, okay, then you've got an eraser, which allows you to just get rid of whatever you want, or subtly kind of remove parts. Uh, you have a instant erase, hard edged eraser, and a soft eraser. The uh, soft eraser can be used to actually do, you know, if, right, for example, if I take a, a pen line and then, you know, I, I want to take that pen line and make it less apparent, you, you know, you can use the soft eraser to actually take away part of it to make it seem faded I guess that can be useful when you're doing line art and you don't maybe want to take away the entire the, th the entire line art you just want to take away a part of it or you don't want to completely erase a color you just want to fade it and make it more subtle then you can use the soft edge soft eraser sorry and then hard edged it's a bit more aggressive and then instant erase it's just your full on get rid of it um, this tablet's running a Tegra 3 processor Nvidia Tegra 3 and I'm it's not super fast, but it does the job. Um, minimal lag. When you put things up to sort of 100%, you, you tend to get a bit more lag. But uh, nothing that noticeable. On paint and things like that, you get more lag or complex blending tools, but not on uh, things like pencil here. So if I take a pencil and it's going from sort of quite leaning gently to as hard as you can go um, take that right up to 100% you can see there you know it's you probably can barely see that and then I'll lean a little bit harder a bit harder still a bit harder and then just really really lean on it and you can also, as I was saying before, you can take uh, a hard white blender, for example. I think I'm, I'll try the hard out smudge. I don't think it really has much of an effect on it. A little bit, you can sort of see maybe that it's it's doing something, but it's not really doing that much. If you take a hard white blender, though, um, you can take that, and it's as if you're using your your finger to smudge which is very handy if you're doing a, a pencil sketch and you want a more a more subtle shading technique and of course you can keep adding your pencil on top of that Again, you just you can use your eraser to get rid of what you don't want. Here at the top, um, this is where you sort of you drag left and right to change the uh, the size of the medium that you're using. Your undo and redo um, settings, layers, references trace an image, color sample, down here you have your manual sort of color picker 
when you have a, a reference image loaded up it'll appear sort of here and you can pinch and zoom that um, and then you just tap on it here and it automatically chooses the colors down here so say you loaded a reference a very colorful reference image of a sunset or something you really like certain colors um, you can just go doop, and it automatically will pick that amazing orange color or golden color or whatever and then you can just use it here and create your own abstract piece or whatever just your own version of that sunset using the same colors or just use those colors to color a picture that you've done uh, there are other more sort of obscure tools here well there's say felt pens so it's the sort of thing that the more that you go over it the darker or more you know intense the color becomes um, Um, crayons. I think they're crayons. I'm not entirely sure if they're supposed to be crayons or pastels. Probably, probably pastels. Though I can't be a hundred percent sure. Um, then we've got the gloop pen, which I, I don't know. It's kind of a strange. art pen that's a little bit random it bleeds into itself in a sort of a strange strange way so it's, it's good for messing around it's not I don't know it's something that I've played with a little bit but to be honest I, I'm not sure I don't know I'm more of a painter and illustrator But there's some very interesting tools. I, I like this. It's, the, it's called the uh, paint tube, which allows you to create some really nice textures. When you're blending, especially with the uh, hard out smudge. See there with uh, more complex tasks, you know, and you're doing almost three dimensional stuff with texture and things. Um, you will notice a little bit of a slowdown. You see there, this purple, I can keep dragging this purple down through the blue and drag the blue down into the lighter blue. And it'll just keep creating more and more tones and the way that the paint actually blends and the way that the paint behaves on the on the canvas as well you can see the texture of it and you can maybe see that the texture is still there on the actual um, like it's coming through on the actual paint um, this is definitely, you know, the main plus of a program like ArtRage. It just does this so well compared to everything else. Nothing comes close to it. Uh, you have a glitter pen, which uh, just I'm kind of confused about. I, I think people use it to create texture and things, um, but I, I've never really found much use for it. Um, so it gives you like this kind of little paint fleck. I think you can actually use the heart, the blender on those to sort of blend them in and things. I guess it could be useful. You know, there's other um, 
paint brushes so you got dry brush, dry clumps, dry varnished, everlasting oil, normal round is the one that I normally use, normal square, tiny daubs which can be sort of um, just little bits of paint which could be you know good for highlighting and things. Um, And obviously, if you create another layer, if I go to this layer here, th this paint doesn't interact with the paint below it anymore. It's as if that paint is dried. Um, and I can come in here and do weird stuff with that paint because it's not tied to the paint below it. I can come in and use a a hardware blender, for example, and blend those. In a more subtle way. Oh, getting a wee bit of slow down. Oh no, it's just that some of those are actually on the layer below. Okay, got you. Uh, then you have the. Uh, it's like a paint roller. So if you want to block block in color, this seems to be the tool to use. It still will sort of blend with the paint below. It's not like a, a regular brush though. Um, color picker here, it's a small sort of tool looks like a wee silver pen and then you obviously you have your fill tool which can be fairly extreme but if you wanted to fill in you know an entire section of a or a background color or something that c could be handy I guess uh, but yeah there, there's an awful lot of things that you can do um, that are just compared to other uh, art software, especially on the Android market, there really isn't that much available. Um, the main sort of software that I would use is, well, from now on it's really going to be this one. This was what I was waiting for. Um, but say there's also Sketchbook Pro, which is, is pretty good, and I'll do a video on it. Uh, another time um, or Infinite Design which also has sort of Infinite Painter which is like a I would say like a per man's version of Art Rage just it doesn't it doesn't really deliver in the same kind of way as Art Rage does um, but yeah, if you're into art and you have a pen-enabled tablet or even just a regular tablet, I would definitely recommend picking this up. It's by far the best art app on Android and probably always will be. Well, in my opinion anyway, there's there's not much comes close in terms of blending tools and just the general kind of range of mediums that you have and ease of use. It's You know, if you know how to paint, and you know what different mediums do it's just a matter of going okay I know what this does here and you pick it and then you start using it and then you can go in and choose your different presets and um, yeah it's brilliant go get it cheers